Previously on the Adventure Zone, it's, t- it's time for the regulators to roll out. We're sending you in to detain and extract Lucas for his abuse of confidential information. Standard protocol <gasps> applies. You pull out from inside an old compact mirror. Inside is actually just a circular disc of emerald. Okay, so he's stealing technological ideas from our world. Guys, he's crystallizing! I turn around and chop Guys! it off. I chop it off. Quit chopping me I'm gonna off. chop it off. <laughs> Chopping off my damn arm. Seriously. If we need a new arm, the good news is he's got lots. Yeah. So if we could figure out a way to make that work, that would be rad. Yeah. I'm unconscious. Thanks. No, I'm not. Okay, that's not what unconscious people say, but let's keep moving. I hope Bill's proficient in unarmed combat. I'm sorry. I'm better than that, and you should expect more from me. It's the adventure zone. Come to you live from bre- a breaking news story, a tragedy, a tragedy that has. Oh my God! Well, don't both do it. When they do breaking news at TV stations, they don't have two different beep deeps. But they do yeah. have someone live do it, like on Carmen San Diego when Rockapella would do the breaking. Yeah, news. but if Rockapella did it, they'd be fucking harmonizing and stuff. Anyway, yeah. breaking news story: Dad, Dad has just touched Justin's dice. He da- he touched my dice. He got it. Whatever it is, he got it all over. Good, him. get over it, dork. Whoa. That's not. You're not supposed to touch. I'm a rebel, man. I got attitude. I got wow. serious now, attitude. It sounds like Justin has implied that there's some sort of residue that Dad has not left sticky, on the not, coke, coke not zero fingers. Not bad. It's just like whatever he does. Critical misses, you mean? Just this critical stink is all over it right now. Huh? And I'm uh, worried that like Critical Stink is a great D and D punk band name. <laughs> uh, uh, but, we're Critical Stink. Let's roll. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before we get into Let's the, roll. <laughs> thank, like a, thank you, Travis. Somebody appreciated it. I liked it. <laughs> before we get into the excitement and action and resolution and shit, some I feel like we need to do some corrections and amendments here at the top. Okay. Um just dad does have a an axe, but it's a and I he announced it in the first episode, and people were kind enough to remind me that dad does have an axe. Wow, y'all hear that? What was that? That's some fucking atmo. It's stormy as hell. Oh, oh okay. Just uh, know that that's not in post. It's not storming inside of Lucas's lab. Um, dad I, does have a hand axe. He announced it in episode one, but it's basically a hatchet. It's like a hatchet that you would use in like a child would get for like Christmas. Like you would use in the book. Hatchet? He's like a Gary Paulson hatchet. Hence the name Lil Choppy. Uh, okay. I also want to say the reason we didn't use the red barrels is because we beat them anyways pretty handily. I don't think we took a lot of damage. Okay. We didn't need the red barrels. Uh, and it wasn't until afterwards when all you punks got to hear Griffin say, the red barrels, that you yeah. went, yeah. Uh, like, just yeah, another, hindsight 2020, you guys. Another another quick one. There, we, I learned this. I didn't. There's no such thing as negative Kelvin. But what uh, if he's really sad? There are and, also uh, isn't like I think I said a thousand degrees Kelvin. That's not anyway, a thing either. I uh, maybe, I'll uh, just one last. As long as we're piling on here, I've been saying the word proboscis wrong my whole fucking life. You know what? Is, we're not a factual show. This no, is not, not about science and learning. It's about Dungeons and Dragons. I saw well, somebody try to defend me like, uh, well, in this fantasy universe, maybe it's pronounced proboscis. Oh, no, <laughs> no, friend. You're embarrassed. Wait, no, it's himself. not proboscis? My sweet friend. No, proboscis with an O. Oh, oh, proboscis is a flower. I've so, been saying no. proboscis the whole time. Is it not proboscis? It's proboscis. Proboscis. Is you proboscis correct. like a weird West Virginia thing? Yeah, you? it's like aunt aunt. All right, let's play Dungeons and Dragons and get on with it. Okay. Um, who needs a refresher? Anybody? Dad's, dad's arm, Merle's arm got chopped off. I just we, listened to it. Yeah. I'm also, um, wait, one last correction. I'm sorry last week after we beat them that I didn't call them fartigrades. I'm oh, oh, man. Just or nardigrades. A gross factual error for Justin. Yeah, that's a gross uh, factual. It was incorrect of me. Um, <laughs> we got a lot of fan mail about it. One thing we also need to resolve, Merle, 
what is your dominant hand? Because I think that's the one that we're going to say got got. Because I don't see why you would grab a thing with your non-dominant hand. He, I actually think he said he was ambidextrous. I did at the very beginning of the show. But along with all these other facts, I guess that was forgotten too. <laughs> it's been two years. Um, it okay. feels like five. Well, if you want to flip a coin um, uh, and tell me which hand got got. I'll roll a die. While Dad's uh, rolling that die, I'll tell you what Chan got got. I should also mention that very early in in the show, I also said that whenever people are around Taco, they get super horny and want to give him lots of money. I said that. And everybody was like, mm-hmm, good, good, good. good <laughs> yeah, we like point. that. We like that. I good actually, day. I wrote that down. Yeah. They get super horny and it, want to give him lots of money. No, I lost I actually, my dominant hand. I lost I, my dominant. Nice. Um, which is your right or left? My right. Okay. Um, Taco, I actually remember the super horny giving you money thing. Like, has that not? That's just how it's have it. It's like my acrobatic skill. It just hasn't. You just haven't used it. it Um, so about 20 minutes have passed since you guys, uh, got Merle into this med bay room. Uh, Merle's dead. He bled out. I'm dead, right? He, he, he died between episodes. It's a D and D podcast first, but he's been recast as a younger. This is Oliver, the new Merle. (laughs) Um, no, he's, he's, he is alive, um, and through a, a series of medicines and, and salves that Lucas has applied, you're actually pretty lucid, and, and the pain from your, your grisly wound has almost completely subsided. Hey, it was and, a very clean cut, thank you very much. I meant grisly, okay, yes. Take pride it in was, your work, Trav. It was it, surgical. It was surgical in nature. I am but it's, surgical with this bitch. By the way, while a, we're on this subject, thanks to all those people who tweeted and said, here's hoping Merle dies... Thank you. Mm-hmm. Well, everybody loves a shake-up, Dad. I don't think that that's personal against yeah. you, but, like, you know, the interjection of it, who knows what celebrity we could get to play the next Merle. Uh, the know? possibilities are very exciting. Let me, let me, let's do some storytelling. Wait, wait, just to be clear, uh, Travis, you're saying that we would not replay, let Dad play a new character. We uh-huh. would bring his old character back to life with a new actor like Doctor Who. Yeah. Okay, got it, cool. Got it. Perfect. Thanks. Um, Th- thanks, bud. You could you could come back as like maybe a whimsical spirit or some kind of like talking book. Sure. Yeah. Or talking dog. Um, or maybe more a of a producer book. role in the back, taking a back seat, <laughs> like a, ro- a Robin to our Howie. You know. <laughs> Why um, am I laughing? I don't know. I don't know. It's very sad. Merle. That's what you'll be doing a lot of, though. And you'll a lot of good ones, sirs. And you'll be asked <laughs> to leave the set because you're interrupting the filming. <laughs> Excellent, young masters. Way to goof them again. Um, <laughs> do you need any limonade? <laughs> Thrilling plot twist. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> Merle, you, you've, you have been treated. What I'm trying to establish is you're actually doing okay. Um, aside from you're missing, you're missing your right arm. Um, yeah. and by right arm, it's mostly your forearm. It kind of just kind of stops at the elbow. Uh, and uh, you're, you're really thoroughly bandaged up on that arm. Uh, the bleeding has come to a stop. Um, things, uh, things have calmed down in, in the past, in, in the 20 minutes that have passed. Um, and just to be clear, when last we left, yeah, uh, Merle had explained to us that he heard a British guy. Yeah. Who tricked him. Yes. Um, and then Lucas, if I remember correctly, said, I'll explain everything. Yeah, Lucas right now is actually in the corner. He's actually removed a, a, a panel from the wall of this med bay. And you can see he's got some sort of like hastily constructed terminal that he's like rewiring some stuff in the panels. And he's like fiddling with this terminal. Um, and, and as he does, you can hear sort of uh, rumbling um, and and some uh, ambient noises coming from pretty far off uh, in the lab. Um, uh, and and in this med bay, now that things have calmed down, you you've actually got a chance to sort of uh, take in your surroundings. There's uh, some some cabinets with medical equipment and uh, medicines. Uh, there is uh, some sort of scanning device, uh, and there is uh, a null suit chamber, much like the one that you guys had in the Bureau of Balance. Um, it's maybe a little bit smaller than the one that you have uh, in your lab that you used to suit up at the beginning of this adventure. Uh, and, and hanging off of the side of it are, uh, uh, is, a, is a suit um, that is Lucas-sized. It is human-shaped. Um, and uh, Lucas stops messing with this, this panel that he's uh, uh, fiddling with, and he goes, Okay, I've, I've rewired uh, and, and shut down most of the rest of my lab 
I, I it should buy us about uh, about an hour and a half to uh, to 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 get downstairs and Great. shut this thing down. That should give us about an hour and twenty nine minutes for you to explain what the holy hell is going on, <laughs> and one minute to get downstairs. There, what what? Do, what don't what don't you already know? Some there there was an accident. Okay, somebody... what don't we know? I got a compact. That lets me see into some strange world. A B. There's a voice that keeps talking to us. C. Some British guy more or less took Merle's hand. D. What the fuck is happening? Oh, wow, he really shifted blame. That's, I mean, yeah, some yeah, British some, guy. Yeah, some Listen, Brit- really if you, if, if, if story, somebody huh? got stabbed with a sword, would you say the sword killed him? No, I was merely the tool that operated on Merle through this British guy. I was a tool. Travis is telling his shield, like, oh no, I never so, cut his hand off. So I, this I, is like guns don't kill people. Magnus takes axes, cuts, kill kills right. arms. Um, he says, I, "Actually, before we get started, Merle, I had an idea because I, we're going to need your your clerical ways as we go deeper." That I was thinking, I had a kind of an idea of how I could maybe restore some of your two handedness, if that makes sense. I'm listening. I'm a little grumpy. Okay. As as everybody can understand. A little put off. Magnus, I uh, I understand that you may have taken a little trophy from Hodgepodge after defeating him. Can I can I see it? Uh give me a minute to find it. Russell, <laughs> Russell, Russell. Not this one. Not this one. <laughs> not this one. Not this one. This, no, not this one. Not is it this no, not that well, one. Well, you are really well armed. <laughs> is, is it this one? Yeah, that's it. He uh he takes it and uh Holds God, it. Uh, Griffin would say no. He, he takes the right. Uh, he takes the right arm and he holds it up to Merle, and it's really little. It's like a small, like a doll's arm, like a oh, toy, right. like a GI Joe arm. He's like, no, I just, I just kidding. That would be, that would be ridiculous. It's like a little toy arm, like, like if I, like if I could somehow plug this into you, how would you control it? That's, that's, that's sci-fi bullshit. Robot arms. Today, the Can part you... of Merle being played by Kristen Wiig. Yeah. Can you was... imagine? <laughs> um, uh, he actually goes back to that desk where he was, he was messing around with a belt and a, a Petri dish where he was messing around. And you see him. Uh, Can take I have a... that arm back, please? Well, I, I need a piece off of it. He uh, he unscrews the this like cap at the end of it uh, and attaches it uh, to this this thing that he's, he's tinkering with. And as he's tinkering with it, uh, Carrie comes back into the room and uh she says uh hey i'm back i've uh i got what you asked me to get from from jamie um and she is holding a potted plant with these four wooden shoots it looks like coming out of it um and and if you'll recall you you saw this very briefly um when you went into the bugbear chamber um and lucas goes okay no this is this is the idea this is going to be great um and he takes that plant and removes it depots it takes it out and and as he's like taking it out of the pot and shaking the dirt off of its roots you actually see the plant like kind of protest like it's like trying to slap his hand away um and he plants it in this petri dish uh that you can see has some sort of green viscous fluid in it uh and he, he sprays it down with something uh, and he picks it up, and it, it just kind of looks like this this wooden plant is hanging off of this this belt. Um, and he he creates Feed some, me, Lucas. He creates some sort of concoction um, that he walks over uh, to Merle, and he says, uh, "Here, uh, drink this. Trust me, please. This is going to be so sick." This is Merle. I know you've been burned by people asking you to do stuff that maybe you don't trust in the past like fifteen minutes, but. Trust me on this. This is going to be tight as hell. Sure. I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Your other right. arm. Your, I mean, your other arm falls I'm, off. I'm really down. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. Kick me while I'm, I'm vulnerable. I feel very vulnerable. Okay. Right now. Uh, so you're down in this, Bev? Mm, it's like an apple teeny. Uh, it actually tastes more like a carbonated wheatgrass shot. Um, nice. It, ta- it, it doesn't taste especially great. Um, but as you taste it, you and as you drink it, you see this this uh, this wooden these four wooden shoots um, hanging off of this belt uh, kind of come to a standstill and 
start to wrap around each other and tie around each other, and they form what looks like kind of a crude four-fingered arm. Um, and and Lucas explains, he says, that, okay, so biology's not my specialty, but th- this is definitely going to work. This is a plant um, called soul wood, and it's it's a psychically tuned plant that can resonate with, with certain people that resonate with them, um, and it can sort of change its, its biology based on the whims of, of other living creatures. And, well, from what I understand, plants are, like, kind of your specialty, um... So romantically, I, yeah. romantically speaking. So my my thinking is, uh, do, do do you mind? I, I'm gonna get close. I'm gonna get intimate. Hell yeah, it's ASMR. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he starts whispering in nerd ASMR. Okay, so what does gotta do? <laughs> um, he takes this belt and wraps it around your shoulder. Uh, and then there's a there's another fastener that goes around your chest. And as Merle, he's how doing do you this, feel about autoerotic asphyxiation? <laughs> As he's doing this, uh, he is straight up like Army of Darkness uh, attaching this wooden arm to you uh, that that is now uh, roughly the size. It's actually uh, kind of bigger than your other arm. I chop um, it off. Oh, no. <laughs> that didn't last very long at all, huh? <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, Not this yeah, time. Yeah, you, you have this wooden arm um, and you feel this like this psychic link with it. You feel like a deep connection with this this arm made up of these four wooden shoots that have twisted around each other to form the, the shape of, of an arm. So I guess awesome. it all worked out. Yeah, everything worked out for the yeah, best. Worked out fine. I he want you to that. feel completely off the hook, Magnus. And Lucas. then Magnus and Merle engage in a very complicated, like, high-five secret handshake so you can test out. They have, we do the shimmy shimmy Cocoa Pop. Um, the bureau handshake. Yeah, as you do the secret Merle and Magnus handshake, uh, Merle, you feel like you feel like it is like not a big deal to move this thing at all. It's it's it takes a, maybe a little bit to become as dexterous with it as you were your your original OG dwarf hand. Um, but yeah, you have pretty good control over over this Soulwood arm, um, and it actually like kind of curls up towards you and gives you a big thumbs up, as if to say. Hey, I'm your arm now. Wow, <laughs> creepy, cool. really creepy. Yeah, good. I, that's it's really yeah, gonna it's cut to, back on I, my my fireworks. I, I want it in yeah. the cannon. And hey, good news! You, now you got somebody to blame for your rolls. <laughs> it's the tree. I want it in the cannon that Magnus is actually like a little bit jealous of his sweet new wooden arm. That Magnus, not not out loud, mind you, but just quietly to himself. Yeah, and I would um, like it in canon that Magnus can kiss my Kenny Chesney tattoo. It's fair. <laughs> All of uh, this is fair. I, I can. Uh, can you imagine what delectable torture that would be, though, for Magnus to have a tree on his arm that he cannot split? Yeah. Well, uh, he can. can Magnus make a tree even he can't split? So, in terms of mechanics, Merle, you now have a just a permanent disadvantage on sleight of hand rolls. That's just that's the your days of having good sleight of hand rolls are behind you. But well, my days uh, of having any good rolls are behind <laughs> me. Uh, but uh, you can now control this hand uh, separately from yourself. Um, you can take it off, chuck it, control it like you would normally. What? Uh, like your your hand only nice. you can control it remotely. So it gave him That's superpowers, awesome. basically. Yeah. Great. And more Magnus, so than just... the magic he could already wield, you know, summoning angels and all that. Mag- Magnus cuts both his legs off. Like, all right, juice me up. What do you got for me? <laughs> um, <laughs> <that's> that off. <laughs> uh, he says, uh, uh, Lucas says, okay, so we don't have a whole lot of time for you to get acclimated to your new arm. So you're going to have to figure it out on the fly. But before we get out there, we're going to need to recharge your suits. Um, and Noel uh, says, oh, that's right. Oh, gosh, sorry. I completely blanked. Um and a little compartment opens up, and a tank uh, pops out uh, that looks very much like the tank of uh, a spray that they plugged into the chamber when you first got sprayed down to null suit yourselves. Um, and uh, Lucas slips into his his null suit and plugs the tank into the chamber. And he's like, "All right, everybody, pile on in. It's time to time to recharge." Um, and I guess very awkwardly, because there's more of you now, it, like you're doing like a real world road rules, um, like how many co-eds can we fit into a phone booth challenge? 
um, you all get coated in another layer of, of uh, null suit juice. Um, the meters, you have these like little panels on your wrist that are showing uh, how much energy you have left in your null suits uh, are completely full up now. Um, and everybody gets all sprayed down. And may I say in Amazon reviews, I'm giving the null suits originally one thumbs down. <laughs> that's not how Amazon reviews work. I couldn't, I couldn't pass up a thumb joke. Oh, that's a good point. We're going to have a lot of those now. I hey, guess. Lucas, while we're all showering together. Yeah. Um, when, when what Merle is that? Mason, <laughs> you're standing on my thigh, which is huh. weird. Thank you for the boost. Um, when Merle mentioned a British guy. Did that ring any bells for you? I, okay, I swear, guys, the lying stuff is is over now. I have no fucking idea what a. But what you British realize guy. that like this is an all audio medium, so all I can do is ask questions, right? No, like, yeah. I can't look around and observe. No, I get it. Um, okay, if you want, I can I can tell you all about the compact. Um, yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, I can. I, it would be easier if I show you the Cosmoscope. Um, can you guys? Are you guys ready to roll? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Still okay. a lot of pain, but okay. Oh, oh yeah, Justin, I wanna, Justin, the I want to hear taco your... taco today will be played by guys. <laughs> yeah, your cold and flu version of taco should be interesting. Yeah. Ta- taco silently nods in agreement. <laughs> you guys make your way out of the med bay and through the decontamination chamber back into the... Uh, central hub. Uh, this this room is kind of a mess because the uh, the crystal golem started to form in here and kind of fucked shit up um, as he was like breaking pieces of crystal off. Um, uh, and you make your way into the door that you saw earlier that was labeled the Cosmoscope. Um, and as you pass through the airlock into the Cosmoscope, you enter into uh, what you assume to be a pretty large chamber, although it is like completely pitch black in here. Um, save for a pillar of light, which is illuminating what looks like a circular disc that is kind of free floating in the middle of the room, uh, facing you. Um, and, uh, uh, Lucas walks, uh, into the back of the room, into the darkness. Uh, you, you, you see him, uh, uh, get out a flashlight and you can see he's like messing with some sort of lectern back there. Uh, for scary stories. And he says, this is the tale of the old sailor's <laughs> mummy. <laughs> uh, no, he flips some switches on this lectern and you see an image pop up on this disc. Uh, and it looks like the lab that you are currently standing in um, as seen from above. Um, from, from outside of the lab. And he says, okay, I'm about to get into some pretty heady concepts. Um, I'm probably going to blow your whole mind and just kind of reshape the way that you think about existence and stuff. So if it ever gets to be too much or you have any questions, please feel free to stop me, okay? Okay, wait, stop. You blow my mind. Okay. Boy, this is going to take forever, I bet. <sighs> um, let's, let's take this slow. My, my whole life, I have been obsessed with the, the concepts of taxonomy and hierarchy, that, that for everything that exists, there's always a bigger thing that contains it. There's always someone cooler than you, right? That's that one way of idea? putting it, yeah. Okay. And, and, and so there's, there's always a bigger thing that it has a bigger thing that contains it, and so on and so forth, repeated on to just an inconceivable degree. Turtles all the way down. Turtles all the way down, turtles all the way up, bigger turtles. Um, so... And he uh, points to this this disc in the room in the middle of the room. He says, uh, th- "Okay, so this is my this is my lab. We could go way deeper on like the micro scale to like elementary particles and stuff like that. But for the lightweight version of this demonstration, let's start here. Here's my lab. Got it. Um, and he holds out two index fingers and does like an iPhone pinch, pinches them together, and you go, and and the image pans out. You see it zoom out, and now you can see." Uh, the 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 Stillwater Sea underneath the uh, underneath his lab. And he goes, okay, so here it is, floating over the Stillwater Sea, and he pinches the screen again, and he said, okay, and here's that sea in relation to the neighboring land masses, and here's the whole continent, Faerun, and here's our whole world, I beer to roll. How'd you do that? Uh, just bear with me. You're gonna go way way further. What? Uh, here's our solar system. Huh? Here's the local interstellar cloud, the local what? bubble, the local arm, the galaxy, 
and a- as he's doing this, like you are seeing all just like the entire galaxy, um, s- the spiraling, and it's it's beautiful. You've never seen anything quite like it. Uh, and he goes, and here's the local I've group. Oh, okay. I want to actually ask you guys about that here in a minute. But here's the local group, the local cluster, local super cluster, and so on and so forth until here. Um, and you it's were all ju- just a collar on a cat. Uh, it's yeah. Uh, he says this is the observable universe. This is every everything we know, everything, every place we've ever been, every person we've ever met, every every place anyone's ever been, uh, is in here. But but more importantly, so are the the immutable rules that govern the the people, places, and things inside of this universe. Things like gravity and thermodynamics and arcane interactions, and, and all that stuff, all that matter and energy and the rules that govern it comprise this our universe. You, you guys are just a handful of people who have ever seen the observable universe before, so it's pretty cool, right? Way into it. Yeah. Yeah, is oh, there like a guest yeah. book we need to sign? Or Hey, listen. Hey, uh, listen. What <laughs> Joe Zabadu. Listen, what if I was to take one step past what you've shown me here? Taco, can I say something? <laughs> What's up? You have just made me very, very happy. He walks to the back and of the room also, again. And also, just to clarify, horny. Right? <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to circle back. Also, <laughs> and also, you have a deep It all ties to together. A lot of money. Uh, you've made me very horny, he says. And he flips a switch on that lectern, and yeah, the, the, whole, the whole room lights up. Mm. And the disc in the middle, you can see, uh, that, you, that you were just looking at, is made of some sort of dark bluish green material in a perfect circle with some silvery trim um, all around it. Um, that uh, and 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 this this disc is levitating, but you realize as the lights go up, this room is filled with these discs, and they're all arrayed in 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 orbit around this central disc in in rings uh, uh, around it. And there's there's ten other uh, of of these these discs in the room and they're all different colors bright reds and oranges and greens and blues and whites and they're all displaying a wide array of scenes of impossible things you look into this this red like disc what? well you see it like a world that looks kind of like the world if the world was made completely out of lava and fire and then there's a blue disc where it's just a a, a, a giant ocean a world made of water and ice um you see a world where millions and millions of these living lights just float weightlessly through the air and worlds where oceans of magical energy wash up on shores made of these brilliant white sands. You that, see these that, things that well, are there's a name for that one. It's Abitha. <laughs> you see You see a world where everything's the same except everybody's got mustaches. You see well no, that's not one of them, but you see all of these like incredible worlds and you don't know where to look. And Lucas uh, says, I would. I would look at Buffett Planet back there, a couple planets back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lucas says, Taco, to answer your question, this is the next thing that's bigger. This is our planar system. This, this, this disc that you see that represents our, our observable universe, this is actually our plane. This is the prime material plane. We're smack dab in the middle of the planar universe. And each of these are different planes of existence. Um, and they, they each produce unique energies and they share these energies. They, they inform the material and physical makeup of, of, of each other. Um, some connections, they, they each have connections. Some are more tenuous than others. But these, these make up the, the real existence. Uh, each plane having its own sort of energies and rules. It's, it's this, this is what's bigger than, than the universe. Okay. And then yeah. what's bigger than that? Good question. Thank you. There's, Good question, I think. Well, let's start with this. There are six <laughs> building block planes, right? There's the and, and these he points to these um, discs that are on like the outermost ring uh, away from the away from the prime material plane uh, disc that's in the middle of the room. And he goes, So you got your elemental planes, fire, air, water, earth, uh, and then you got the planes Heart. of light light and shadow. No. Uh, Taco, certainly you, you you probably know a little bit about these during your studies at, at Wizard U. Yeah, I've gotten um, balls deep in some of those other planes. 
I think he's got a secret room in one of them. When I use Blink, I get all up in those other planes. Yeah, that's that's right. When you use Blink, you end up in the ethereal plane, yeah. um, and you, you didn't see list that, that amongst your planes. Well, there's more. I I'm gonna run through them, but if you actually look. Uh, you can actually see underneath the uh, 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 disc that you were looking at first, where you're like looking at your own universe. You actually see uh, 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 another disc underneath it, uh, and he's like, "That one is the the ethereal plane, um, and it's kind of like a filter. It's like where the raw energies of the rest of the planes are kind of filtered into the prime material plane, so it's not just like everything's on fire or drowning all the time." Uh, so yeah, anyway, that's the seventh. Uh, and then we got, uh, the, the planes that sort of inform the energies of life itself, like the plane of magic, where magic energy is born. And then on the opposite end of that, you see there's, there's the plane of thought, which is the source of logic and reason and emotion. So the um, boring one. Well, as you actually look into the, the plane of thought, uh, which is a, um, which is this deep green emerald mirror, you see similar scenes to the things that you saw in the compact. Magnus, you see like, uh, you see uh, uh, a large, uh, wide gray road with a bunch of vehicles just sort of sitting stuck on it. Metal you, dragons. You see, yeah, you, you see scenes like you saw in the in the in the compact. So this um, plane is where all the creativity and energy for this world comes from. The creation. Uh, yeah, it's like where the it's where the home of like logical thought is. Is that's that's why I call it the plane of thought. Um, Show me Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> he says I don't know quite who that is. Um, although the fact that you guys make so many references to this world makes me think you have to have spent some time there at some point. I like, have a little house there. I can't tell if you're joking, which is like kind of part for the course. Anyway, uh, there's the other higher planes. There's the celestial plane, which is inhabited by the beings that I guess some people would consider deities. Um, there's the meat plane, the vegetable plane, the dairy plane, so mm-hmm. right? the breads Someone. plane. Uh, Fat, uh, soluble fats plane. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but you only want to visit that one sometimes. The plane plane that's not very exciting. Yeah, I've been yeah, working on an updated plane, version. Plane that's just full of planes. <laughs> uh-huh. And the plane, plane, plane with all these plane planes in the yeah. plane. Yeah, you got to be careful with I've that. Been work- I've been working on a new version of the food pyramid to kind of educate the people <laughs> of Faerun, uh, but it's kind of a, like a cube, and it's for people who like to party. It <laughs> <laughs> sounds... Uh, I, hey, uh, listen, I got to be honest from me to you, that sounds dope as hell. Uh and then uh, uh, the prime material plane, the ethereal plane, you know about those. And then uh, uh, the, the astral plane, um, uh, where, which is where our unconscious forms or our souls retire when we, when we die here in the prime material plane. Is um, Merle's arm there? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That goes completely against my theology. Yeah. Well, like, is there a pan plane? Please respect well, his beliefs. Well, pan probably kicks it in the celestial plane. Um, he, okay. you actually, as he was talking about the astral plane, you realize that there are only, there, there are, he's, he's talked about 12 different planes, but there, there's only 11 in the room. And he goes, he says, oh, the, the astral plane. So anyway, let me explain crystals, certain, certain types of gemstones, if grown into a perfect circle, they can't be cut. If you cut it, it doesn't work. If they, they have to be naturally grown in a perfect circle, resonate with the different planes of existence, with the, with the 12 planes that form our, our planar system, right? Well, everybody knows uh, that. Yeah, well, that's 101. Uh, yeah. Literally, literally nobody outside of this family knows that. Uh, I until knew it. Na- until well, I, now. Knew, well, I knew it. Yeah, we okay. knew it. We talked about it yesterday. You remember that, Merle? Yeah. Oh, it, it, yeah, yeah, yeah when yeah. I wasn't speaking to you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hey, listen, little man, these guys are just being braggadocious. Don't let them rattle your chain. <laughs> Go ahead with what you were saying. I love, I'm loving all this. Lay it down. So any, anyway, uh, my great grandfather found a crystal just like that, and it was a, a perfect emerald disc that had just grown like that naturally in nature, and through that he was able to see into the plane of thought, and using that, it we may have gained a little bit of inspiration for. Uh, for our inventions here in the prime material plane. Kind of cheating, I guess, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Is it possible that through tampering and connecting with these planes that you might have gotten the attention of something that we shouldn't have? Definitely not. That that really Um, kind of feels like what's going on here. can, Can you guys give me a minute? Sorry. One sec. 
He's gonna go right. He's gotta go write a new story. Yeah, he's he's like, uh, no, no, no. Give me twenty minutes. It's like when the producers of Lost pretended that that it wasn't about um, purgatory oh, the whole time. It was. It was. It was, it was about purgatory. It was about purgatory the whole time. Oh, I thought it was inside like a snow globe thing, and no. it was like. Here's the thing, Dad. The tricky thing is, even when it wasn't about purgatory, it was because that's how purgatory works. Yeah. Oh. <sighs> hey, I'm back. Sorry. So yeah, my fi- my family. <sighs> We've sort of led the industrial revolution in in this world for generations now because of that mirror, and so because of that, um, my my mother Maureen uh, started to sort of come up with this idea of how we could create other mirrors in other worlds. Um, but it's really hard to do, you know, because you can't you can't like I said you can't cut these gemstones to well, create. Well, if it was these easy, mirrors. everyone would do it. You know That's what I mean? Exactly. Everybody would have their own extra planar sort of telescope situation. Uh, Killian's actually getting a little short short tempered about all this she's like can you please just like explain what this had why you use the grand relic to do all this stuff because things are i don't this is cool he and was everything. trying to grow another mirror for the ethereal plane okay yeah that's why i assume i was just kind of hoping to get to the point a little read bit. between the lines killian uh he says okay so so she's not seeing anybody your, nice your mom try. is not like dating or anything right yikes okay no maybe carbon dating is okay. she a plant <laughs> That's his thing. I mean, my thing. my mother was very, very much a, a botanist. She she sort of helped. Mm-hmm. Did um, your mom die or did she like disappear one day? She passed away. Well, um, passed away into another plane. Well, yeah, into the astral plane because that's where you go. Um, anyway, I so I was we I used the philosopher's stone to transmogrify uh, just pools of water into into these different mirrors. Um, and it took me some experimenting. I, I had to figure out like which gemstones correspond to which planes. Uh, man, I made so many gemstones. Um, but uh, yeah, the result is I created these 12. I Unfortunately, I was, I was working. Uh, he flicks a, another switch on the lectern and the, the discs start to sort of rotate around the central one. Like they're moving like planets in orbit. He was like, I was trying to get their trajectories right, and the I accidentally broke the astral mirror, so I got to grow a new one of those. Although smooth I, move, I, yeah, Xbox. I very much doubt that you guys are going to let me keep playing around with that philosopher's stone. So I guess I, I'm just going to have to cut my losses there. Well, but. but then again, I get it when you want the complete set and you don't have, and you're like one yeah, away. Exactly. You know. So, anyway, it's like um, NASCAR plates. Yeah, it, I mean, it, I'm a collector too, man. I get it. This is this is what I was working on. This is what I was using the philosopher's stone for is to create the cosmoscope, which I could use to to see the whole planar system. And Merle, you asked a very important question earlier that I would also like to circle back to. Ah, yes. What was it? <laughs> you have already forgotten. Of course, that qu- he freezes and time. Well, kind you of, son of a time kind of freezes. <laughs> Um, and you're in complete control of this world, Griffin. You made that happen. Don't yeah. act like that was out of your control. Yeah, time is kind of frozen here. The orbit of these discs has stopped. Um, and Killian and and Carrie and Noel have just kind of stopped. And from behind you, you hear a voice ask that question. Uh, and it asks, "What's bigger than this?" Bro, oh yeah. God! If he's got a raincoat on, I am not turning around. <laughs> oh, like a flasher in his penis. Thank you, Travis. I just wanted to make sure that all of our listeners, especially the younger ones, really understood what. Yeah, Dad you was know the chi- the children who listen to the podcast, <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> of course, Ch- children who are going to be very confused the first time they see an onion, like. I don't know what these are supposed to be for. You shouldn't let your kids listen to this show. Griffin literally named a character King F*** <laughs> It's like, where does that even fit in? You know, I don't even... Well, I mean, I know where it fits in, but... Uh, listen, I, I didn't mean that in the way that you thought I meant it. Hey everybody, this is Griffin McElroy, your Dungeon Master, your best friend, your dog whisperer. Thank you for listening to episode 35 of The Adventure Zone. 
what turned out to be an extremely exposition heavy episode sometimes that just happens we're trying to we're trying to build bridges trying to set some some groundwork got a lot to talk about in this week's commercial break so let's get right into it we got a couple sponsors this week on the adventure zone uh i want to tell you all about squarespace if you've ever listened to podcast then you probably know all about Squarespace. They are a platform uh, that you can use to design a really good-looking website without having to know anything about making websites, um, without having to spend much time doing it. Uh, it makes it really easy to make really gorgeous websites. Travis used it actually to make McElroyShows.com, uh, which I might as well plug here as well, uh, where we track all of the different podcasts we're doing. We're doing a ton of different podcasts between like hosting and editing and producing, uh, and Travis made McElroyShows.com to... like. Uh, sh- show everybody we're, what we're doing and you use Squarespace to do it. They got easy to use tools, they got templates, they got everything you need to showcase every detail of what drives you. So you can start your free trial today, just visit squarespace.com slash adventure because you should Squarespace. I was supposed to do an ellipsis in there, I think I did a proper amount of pausing. The Adventure Zone is also supported in part this week by Loot Pets. It's like Loot Crate, but for your pets. It is a monthly subscription mystery crate, and it's for your pets and the people that love your pets. <laughs> Delivering fun and hard-to-find apparel, accessories, toys, treats, and more. For under 20 bucks a month, you'll get six to eight items that include licensed gear, apparel, collectibles, and more stuff that you never even knew existed for your little pooch.er They're celebrating the release of Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice with some of the greatest rivalries in pop culture. This March's theme is called Versus. They got exclusives that you can wear, display, and use in addition to their monthly t-shirt and their their monthly loot pin. Treat your pet right. Treat your dog so right. You have until the 19th at 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to subscribe and receive that month's crate. Just go to lootcrate.com slash adventure and enter the code adventure, and you can save three bucks off any new subscription. How about that? How about that? I've got a personal message here. If you want to get a personal message for yourself or your small business on the show, just go to MaximumFun.org slash Jumbotron. It's the easiest thing in the world. You can find all the, the instructions on how to do that there. This one is for Michael Burkarski, and it's from Clara, a.k.a. Her Excellency Lady Pants. Uh, Clara, a.k.a. Her, ex- her, her Most Excellent Lady Pants, says, I just spent too much money. Well... I will be the, you know, to each their own. Uh, I just spent too much money to be the first one of us to make a McElroy say something on our behalf. I think I win at friendship. And I guess friendship is now a sport about being the fastest to pay a podcaster to say things. Also, going to super fancy Japanese restaurants. We should do that again. P.S. I win. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not crazy about being, I guess, the scoreboard for this bold new sport. But um, I like the I like the direction that it's going in. And, um... I would love to be a sponsor of your Make Podcaster Say Shit team. And one final message. Uh, this one is actually a call to action to uh, go uh, go give a read to a new book. It's called The Cogs of Alasura. That's A-L-U-S-U-R-A by Sydney Lotto, uh, which is available now on the Amazon Kindle for $3.99. $3.99. What is this book, you ask? Well, I'm about to tell you. Calm down. Uh, the Cogs of Alasura is a steampunk adventure following the exploits of Eleanor and Simon Brader. As they hunt down their former teammates who murdered their king, they discover a dark secret that will shake their country to the core and push their very marriage to the brink. Along the way, they must fend off hordes of ferocious elemental fungus monsters that prowl the night and feed on those who leave the safety of Alasura's walled cities. Just search Terra Finite, T-E-R-R-A-F-I-N-I-T-E, for links to the Facebook page. This is good if you if you listen to our bonus episode, which is very steampunky, and you got that flavor in your mouth, and you want more of it. Go here. Uh, go go check out the Cogs of Alasura. Give me one second. I'm going to just jot down ferocious elemental fungus monsters to steal that for a later episode of the Adventure Zone. Thank you very much. So this is very very important. Starting next week, the Max Fun Drive, the 2016 Max Fun Drive, kicks off and it runs for two weeks. Uh, if you listened to the show last year, you know all about the Max Fun Drive. The we we are a part of the Maximum Fun Network. We are happy to be a part of it. Uh, us with with my brother, my brother, and me, and the other shows that we've been doing. Uh, we've been on the network for forever now, and we absolutely love it. It is a donor funded, supported network. Every year we do bonus content we do special episodes we have exclusive gifts for new and upgrading members who who donate to help support us uh 
and and keep us going and allow us to spend more and more time and resources on on doing these podcasts. Uh, and that starts next week, uh, next Monday on March 14th, and it runs for two weeks. So if you are a donor to the Maximum Fun Network or you become a donor during this drive, you will get access to all of the bonus content that the Adventure Zone has ever done, including all of the bonus content that all of the shows on the Maximum Fun Network has ever done. It is tons and tons and tons of content. Uh, and that includes a new bonus episode that we did special just for this Max Fun Drive, uh, where Travis was the dungeon master of a whole new game, whole new world, new characters, new everything. Uh, it's it's like an hour and 40 minutes. It was really, really fun. We're trying to figure out a way to do more of it as, as an incentive for the Max Fun Drive uh, that, that we would give out to, to donors. Uh, but yeah, it was really, really fun. And if you want to hear it, you can become a donor and you can help support us and you'll get uh, all kinds of pledge gifts. Um, so, so that's, that's sort of our incentive for donating during the pledge drive. Uh, we are going to put out an episode, uh, for two concurrent weeks. So we are actually, uh, not skipping next week. We're going to have a new episode next week. However, uh, we are actually going to do the, the adventure zone zone, a dumb, dumb, bad, bad joke that we joked about, uh, where we would do sort of a talking dead style discussion of the game and the story. And we would answer questions and, uh, sort of address fan theories and all that stuff. Uh, so, so to sort of bridge the gap between weeks or between bye weeks, I guess, between fortnights, uh, we are going to have an episode up next Thursday where we do the, the adventure zone zone. Uh, if you have a question that you want to get on the show that you want us to talk about, about D and D, uh, or about this campaign, uh, just go ahead and send that to adventure zone at gmail.com. And uh, we'll probably end up talking about it. I have no idea how this episode's going to go, but we definitely wanted to do something uh, for concurrent weeks. Uh, and so we are doing the, the Adventure Zone Zone, and I'm really excited about it. And of course, we'll have more details on how you can help support us and support the network uh, next week during the Max Fun Drive. I want to thank everybody who's been tweeting about the show using the, the Zonecast hashtag. Uh, if, you, if you tweet using that hashtag, you might end up as a character on this show. Like the many characters that have ended up in this arc, uh, there, were, there were no new ones in this episode, if I can remember correctly. Um, um, but yeah, we're, we're probably got a couple more episodes in this arc and then we're going to move on to the next one. And that's always a big opportunity to get a bunch of new characters named after you. Uh, so go ahead and tweet about the show using the, the Zonecast hashtag. We really appreciate you spreading the word too. Uh, this has gone on for roughly forever. Uh, our next episode will be the, the adventure zone zone. And, uh, that's going to go up next Thursday, March 17th. And then we'll have another episode up, uh, back to more regular programming on uh, Thursday, March 24th. So, uh, Hey, See you next week. I'll, I'll do a recap of what happened before we started talking about dicks. You hear a voice from behind you say, What's bigger than this? I turn around. No, Magnus turns around. Which one am I? <laughs> Um, as I'm you, lost within myself. I don't know. Nobody does character voices except me. So I turn understand. around. That's fucking. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Why would he say that? Aloud? I turn around too. I'm turning around. We're all turning. Um, as you all say that you're turning around, as you turn around, out loud, um, out loud, you see a floating figure in, in a bright red robe. I um, I attack it. Yeah, I okay. blast it with magic missile. Okay. Uh, Magnus, roll your dice. 15 plus 7, 22. Okay, he's incorporeal, and your axe passes right through him. I attack again. I get two attacks per turn. (laughs) 14 plus 7, 21. Your second attack hits. And what? It's a, no, it doesn't. He's incorporeal. It passes right through him. Uh, and Taco, you does he seem miffed? Um, nope. Taco, you're magic missling him? No, I... Well, I mean, it depends. Did I know he was incorporeal before, or did I watch him, Travis, attack first? If I watched Magnus attack first, I probably didn't blast it with Magic Missile. Okay, uh, then I as- step, Magnus steps into the place where he is and like kind of blends in with him and goes, "Ho ho ho! I'm in a red robe." He, he faces. He okay, faces. Now I do use Magic Missile. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, he phases sort of upwards, so he's floating above you. Okay. Excuse me. Uh huh. Sup? No. Um. <laughs> ASL. ASMR. I spoke to you about the hunger of all living things. When? What? When was that? The last time he fucking saw you. Remember a thing. Remember? No, anything. that was in character, Griffin. That was Magnus. Oh. 
The last one in the office building. In the oh, oh, with Bane, Bane, with Captain Captain Bane. Yeah, he tried to poison you. He tried to poison us. Okay, so a lot of things went unnoticed. Uh, I'm not, I'm not remembering. I, that well, that one is by me. Well, take it on credit. I warned you about the hunger of all living things. Mm-hmm. Uh, he motions to all of the different planes, and he says, This is the power it seeks. The power of creation itself. Got it. A billion, billion lives have been devoured by this hunger in pursuit of its power. A billion, billion? Yes. That's a lot. It sure is. Um, he waves a hand, and um, uh, there's a crate sort of in the back of the room by the lectern. It actually kind of looks like a kind of like a trash bin. Um, and as he motions towards it, it tips over, and some small gemstone discs crash out of it. Um, and one of them, you can see, is a uh, uh, it, it's a very dark disc, kind of like black, uh, but you can see definite like flecks of red and green and blue color in in this black disc. And this this disc begins to shake, and this horrifying black cloud sort of emerges out of it, and it slowly creeps towards these discs that are floating in the room, and one by one just consumes them. And and as each uh, disc is consumed, you hear like screaming voices coming from it um, whoa hey it, it is it is an absolutely terrifying scene um and uh it it consumes the prime material plane and you feel kind of sick watching it um and after it has consumed all of them uh this red robed figure snaps his fingers and the cloud disappears this vision kind of leaves you um and he says um there's no more running there's no escape. This world is life's last chance. Who are you? I, it's not time for me to tell you that yet. What time will you tell me? In like 10 episodes. Okay, I'll put it in my calendar. Uh, he says, uh, you three are the only... Taco. Taco, where did you find that umbrella? Yeah, I took it off this, uh, I took it off this dead thug with a red robe. This dead guy. <laughs> he had a red robe. He was totes dead. You, he was dead, though. You I didn't just ki killed him. Listen, I, I didn't Did we kill, kill him? him or? No, no, no. No, okay. No, 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 he was no. long dead. We, we would This, no, this, no problem. He's starting to, no problem here. he's starting to shudder. He, there's red electricity kind of crackling through him. Um, mm -hmm. and he says, what? What? Wait, you, you found her? I'm going to step a little bit away from It was a lady? Uh, as he shouts that, he bursts into flames and disappears. Dag. Wow. Um, and the lights come back on, and uh, Lucas says, what's bigger than this? And we turn around, and he's got his penis out. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we've been through a few things just now. Ta it doesn't matter. Go ahead with your little presentation. I think we're all getting a big kick out. Of it. Um, hey, by the way, I meant to tell you this is a great PowerPoint. Thanks. A lot of people forget to give props for PowerPoints. Thanks. Great I, ones. It's not as easy as it looks. Thanks. Sir. It's not as easy as it looks. There's a great. lot of aesthetic. Yeah, I worked. I worked. Made. I like the font. I worked really hard on it. There's some good clip art. Like free, like free, fair use, clip art. Hey, it's me, Clippy. I see you're trying to explain the planar system. <laughs> Might I recommend uh, Comic Sans? Noel. Uh, <laughs> Noel has her little satellite dish scanner thing out, um, and it's it's glowing green. And she says, "Well, that's weird." Um, I sense green. I had my scanner on before from before when I, I scanned that crystal monster, and it's I'm picking up some. It says it's it, one of you guys isn't a lich, are you? A what? A lich? I'm not. No, not to my knowledge. I, no, I guess, but I, but I have a couple of liches that are friends. I, yeah, oh yeah. yeah, I've got liches. They're cool. Friend. They're really they're good. They're good people. I guess my scanner's on the blit on the on the fritz. I'll have to. You're sensing a lich. Yeah, picked up on a, a lich being in the room. Like and a, a lich, like a lich, a lecher. I don't. Uh, a lich is like a, a undead. Uh, like uh, uh, you can make an arcana check, and I can tell you exactly what a lich is. 
All right. Yeah, rolling. I forgot about that. Okay, that's not going to do it. That's a four plus zero. Yeah. Four. Um, yeah, you have, All right, you have... I'll make one with my plant arm. Fifteen. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, uh, Merle, between your sort of backgrounds in uh, religion and arcana, you, you know that a lich is sort of this uh embodiment of a a very powerful magic user who uh sort of uh combines their their essence their like life energy with their magical energy and sort of transcends their their physical form um technically it's like an undead imagine like a ghost made out of magic um but okay. but that a, a, a magic user has to kind of willfully do that um Although, like David Blaine, kind of, yeah. Except that what's what's interesting is is that most liches, uh, when when a magic user does this, it's like way too ambitious a thing, and they can't really control that energy. And most liches are just like in, insane. Like they they have no control over themselves. They're just like hyper hyper violent, hyper evil um, embodiments of like raw magical energy. Um, they are not usually well spoken. Um, beings. Um, and Lucas uh, also says, uh, well, that's that's weird. Did you, What are you guys knocked over by my rubbish bin? I had some things here that I was... Uh, these are some mirrors that like didn't end up being anything. Um, did, what do you guys like, come over and kick this over? No, no that no. doesn't sound no. like us. That sounds like something we would do. No, if we we really... And we, you know, when we're staying at somebody's place, we take mm -hmm. really good care of it. Yeah. So I don't... Yeah. No. Okay. Mm -mm, not us. Um, this is going to be my final plea for everybody on the show to use character voices. <laughs> I would do anything to make it more sonically pleasurable for our listeners. Let me, let me try it again. No, it wasn't me. No, I didn't do it. Ah, nope. We're very careful about plays. It was me. Yeah, I can't. No, I'm not going to play with you, little kid. <laughs> you guys could like essentially swap right now if you wanted to. Oh, that's easy. I'll just talk like I always talk because I don't. that means I don't have to do character <laughs> voice Travis, or dad. Ever. Um, so the the uh, the mirror on the floor that you actually the the black mirror that you saw that cloud come out of um, from where you're standing fairly far away you actually see some like faint white moving shapes in it. I I get closer to it. Okay. Uh, yeah. It, it, as, as standing over it, you can actually see um, what look like white eyes looking back at you through this through, through this black mirror. Um, and, uh, as, as they sort of make eye contact with you, uh, these eyes, uh, quickly shut and disappear. I pick it up. Okay. Can I, hey, Lucas? Yeah, what's up? Can I, uh, have this? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's kind of value. I mean, it's ethically unsound. You're not going to, like, Lucas? you're not going to sell it, right? Mm, no. It's, so that's, that one's made out, uh, let me see. That one's made out of black opal. Which is, I mean, it's it's inert. It doesn't resonate with any planes. Um, but yeah, I guess if you want to keep it, you can hold on to that. That if you want, I do. Okay, and I chop his arm off. <laughs> That's just gonna be a it just when you least expect it. <laughs> well, you know, I don't want his arm to turn into a black disc with little white flecks nah, in cool. it. it's cool. It's cool. Nothing. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not. Uh, all these things, all these crystals and stuff, aren't aren't uh, spreading around. This room is not. Also, I should have mentioned earlier, it's not crystallized with the pink tourmaline. Um, he says, uh, "Okay, anyway, yeah, that's what I've been up to. So uh, let's uh, let's let's the the spear. Uh, sorry, Lucas. One, real quick, one second. The spirit that we encountered." Talked about this seeing what, that beyond the what? plane. <clears throat> what? No, oh, nice one. Good one. Yeah, Smooth. there was a thing. Yeah, I, because we know so much. There was a spirit, a thing that like inhabited the golems that we've been fighting and that kind of stuff that sang to us about seeing beyond the plane and their crystal kingdom. And it really feels like this planar stuff might have something to do with that. As it. We're sorry we didn't tell you before, Lucas. That Are you Nixon. Richard Nixon? Is that okay? Is that good? Yeah, it's fun. Oh. I'm gonna. You can't just do any voice. <laughs> you just told me to do <laughs> character like, voice. Rich Little plays Dungeons and Dragons. Real mommy. 
You don't uh, want to take on a fucking tour of American history. Well, just do, your... do one character voice to do it. Well, you're doing a different character voice. You're Barry uh, White's my voice. my throat hurts. And again, that's two to your zero voices. <laughs> well, you're using up all the character voice. <laughs> um, he says he, he, did not, he has no idea what you're talking about. Uh, what songs? What are you talking about? It, it goes like, you in my crystal kingdom, there is a castle on a cloud. Um, I have an accuser. Oh, I'd like to go there in my dreams, you in my crystal kingdom. <laughs> that was Magnus singing in character voice. Yeah. I mean, right. the song is basically a mashup of that and the forest music from the Super Mario RPG. I've realized Perfect. now in post. Um, we should probably get a move on because I think we're down to about fifty minutes now, and um, uh, yeah, we should we should really get scooting. Okay, Let's quick go. twenty minute nap. Hey man, that'll be groovy. Let's okay. go. Let's go, Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> <laughs> as a gnome, as a wait. Dwarf. So am I, Jerry Lewis? Hold on. Okay. We got Dean Martin. We've got Sammy Davis Jr. I'm out the door, okay. so I can't hear. Uh, this. Ba- so back in the uh, back in the the sort of central hub room um, of this floor, um, Lucas walks over to the central pillar, and it's got one of those like red hand lock uh, things on it. And he puts his hand on it, and it makes a bing bong noise. And you hear uh, you hear an elevator sort of moving up to to come to your level, and he says. Uh, Okay, are you guys ready to uh, go down to the lower level? Are you guys ready to stop this thing? What What is down there? One of my robots just attacked me. I don't know. I think we can stop him, but I, I think... Oh, cool. I, robots. Yeah, I, Let's do I it. believe in the power of our friendship and teamwork that we can all do it. Um, yeah, well, maybe. And Hell yeah. And Carrie and Killian actually draw their weapons. And they say... Or, or, and, and Killian says, Lucas, the only place that you're going is the pokey. We, we've what time man? we received orders to we had to get we had to figure out what he was doing do you not remember our orders from no, the director I do but you couldn't wait until after he helped us stop the thing I'm not gonna let him get anywhere near the philosopher's stone I don't trust this dude as far as so I can so what do you gotta do with him right now I'm going to take him we're gonna extract him and we're gonna fucking lock him in prison probably forever and you're just gonna leave us here to deal with this shit you guys can handle it you're reclaimers we can't do it if we get too close to the thing it might end up tempting us it'll definitely tempt this motherfucker we're taking this guy to jail <laughs> I appreciate less help. Carrie, Thank you so much, Killian. Killian is getting kind of aggro, and Carrie's like trying to sort of, okay, guys, listen. We gotta take him away. We gotta take him out. And Lucas is like, Merle, Merle, Magnus, Taco, come on, help me out. I can help you guys stop this thing. All right. Here's the deal. Killian, Carrie, take him back to the lab. Lock yourselves in where we just were. Lock yourselves in. Leave his necklace on him. If he helps us get through this through communication, Lucas, if you help, I will plead your case. I will say that you are cooperative. That we you don't have easily. like a court. We don't. This guy used a grand relic, and he he knew not to do that. That's that's hey, it. This like are you saying this out loud, or are you saying this like in? Character? Yeah, that's Killian's voice. I know it's confusing. Okay. Um, okay. Hey, uh, well, you know, good plan, Magnus, but suddenly she just blew up your spot. Way to play along, Killian. Real smooth. Yeah. I don't tell you Super hey, cool. I don't tell you guys how to recover relics. You don't tell me how to regulate. You actually have done that before. I've so said many yeah, times yeah, I didn't I can precisely. Remember okay, six the times first the that. first time we met, yes, I explicitly told you how to recover relics, but you weren't on the on the payroll then. Listen, you guys are good at this. We're good at this. She points at Lucas. We're this is what we're good at, which is getting creeps away from from destroying the fucking world. You would be locked in a fucking frozen room if we hadn't come along. That's so pro- don't sit there and lecture me on how you know how to do your job. We're going to get through this together. You got it? As you're like arguing with Killian, um you notice that this pool of it looks like blue, just like a pool of the color blue is spreading out of the central elevator in this room. And then very quickly like a like a a sound wave it like roars through the entirety of the room and you feel like the lab shake a little bit um, and you actually feel this this wave of blue ripple underneath your feet and then suddenly the whole room uh, is blue sapphire. 
And then very quickly, before you can sing any more of the song, there's another roar and another wave, and then the room is bright green emerald. And then another wave, and it is just shimmering orange topaz. And the room just keeps like fluctuating quickly bet- between these different colors, and it kind of feels like there's an earthquake happening as the entire lab transmutates between these different gemstones. And with each one, there's like another deafening roar, um... And finally, it, it all kind of settles on, let's say, amethyst. What color is that? <laughs> Purple. <laughs> Purple. Um, and amber? it's sort of... Did you mean to say amber? Amber, yeah. It stops at amber. No, that's not yeah. good. We'll do amethyst. No, that that gives it makes us look all washed out. Yeah. What color is the energy? Uh, I mean, the, the, energy's, the energy is 311's amber, but... Uh, okay. As, uh, listen, as, 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 so this kind, yeah, it kind of puts an end to the uh, the argument that you're having. I, Killian, I'm sorry. I don't even know what we were arguing about, friends. Yeah. So <laughs> you're gonna let us take this guy back, and you're not gonna raise a big. Oh no, that's what we were arguing about. Thank you. I completely forgot. <laughs> Lucas says, uh, "Gang, listen. We don't have time for this." Um. And uh, I need all of you guys to make constitution saving throws. Not great. Yeah, mine is Holy. great there, Ditto. Um, I had a four plus three, seven. I rolled 18 plus two is 20. Damn it. Nice. One plus dick for me. <laughs> as soon as Lucas says that, um, you all feel... Uh, the panels that are built into the wrist of your null suits that Lucas designed, um, you feel them very quickly heat up, and then you feel something very bad as these purple volts of electricity just kind of uh, surround you, uh, emanating from that panel, uh, and paralyzing you. Uh, God damn it. And uh, Taco, you just fall to the floor. You are not moving. You have been completely paralyzed as you fall to the floor. Uh, Magnus, uh, your, uh, your like head is good and your hands are good, but your arms and legs are both paralyzed. Um, and Merle, just your legs are paralyzed as you fall to the floor. Uh, but all of you go down. Carrie and Killian go down like a sack of bricks. Um, and uh, right as soon as that happens, the elevator door is open. Uh, Lucas runs in. And as the door shut behind him, he says, I am so, so sorry. Well, you know what, you dickhole? <laughs> like, I was fighting for you, you ass. Uh, and he is gone. And Killian says, I am going to absolutely murder that man. Yeah. I am yeah, absolutely yeah. going to kill him. Oh, my God, I'm going to kill him so good. Yeah. You and me both, Killian. Great. Now I can't feel my legs. I'm down to one arm. One freaking arm uh right. your both your arms are actually pretty good um and you can throw one of them off and still control it you're the one of most a weed hey guys <laughs> hey guys check it out oh y'all can <laughs> right oh y'all can right um oh y'all can like did the dinner i think he's saying it. oil can uh, oh, i thought can. he was saying brass wine <laughs> You hear crinkle tinkles. <gasps> Fuck. Uh, they're coming from the floor, you can tell, now that you're all on floor. Um, you can tell that it's kind of reverberating through the, the crystal that's taken over this room. And yeah, the crinkle tinkles are building, and they're getting way louder. Uh, and uh, you hear the beginning of a song start to play, and then through the very crystal that has uh, encased this room, you hear another verse of the song. Saved from the darkness by my child Locked in a cage of glass and steel But my true love remains in exile Begging me to break the seal Into this crystal kingdom I'm actually going to say the lyrics out loud because I, I think some folks have trouble understanding Vocaloids. Not most most people like don't have an. I ear. don't speak Vocaloid. Yeah, I don't have an ear for it. Um, uh, the the voice just saying, "Saved from the darkness by my child, locked in a cage of glass and steel, but my true love remains in exile, beckoning me to break the seal into this crystal kingdom." 
Can I ask a question? Yep. Is anybody writing this shit down? Yeah. Okay. Good. I mean, not me, but I assume somebody is. Yeah. Perhaps they could send it to us. And as that as that verse wraps up, another rift opens in space. Um, Merle, you're probably the only person that can really like get up to see this happen. Um, and out of that rift, that white fire comes out of it. And those loose pieces of crystal shards that the golem kind of abandoned when it left this room start to self-form again. Um, Merle, you see your arm, your poor, poor crystallized arm sort of float into this mass uh, and come together to form another crystal golem. This one is actually way more like slender than the other ones you've seen. Um, it looks like weirdly like bony, almost like a crystal skeleton with these long um much longer much sharper looking appendages uh and this m- menacing apparition comes and stands over the five of you uh all all laying paralyzed on the ground um and through all of your stones of far speech you hear a voice say well this is hardly fair MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Ty is a pedantic person. I think when he pronounces these words, it's, it's in a very show off way. Gyro. Gyro. Sacre bleu. Sacre bleu. Ayers Rock. Uluru. <laughs> <laughs> what you are witnessing is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with real cases. They call in via Skype to Judge John Hodgman's court, the real people's court. Now I call you to Judge John Hodgman's internet court. Find it at MaximumFun.org or wherever you download podcasts.